Or maybe, I don't know. I shouldn't sing, right? Anyway, uh, yeah, super happy forever. Welcome, um, very nice, uh, movie. Let's uh, talk about it. I, I just want to put the disclaimer up here. First, um, I will complain about this movie quite a lot. It's not so bad. It's not that I, I, I know sometimes I remember I, I did a, a podcast on Perfect Days, the uh, Wim Wenders film. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a totally fine movie. But I have some issues, and someone said, Oh my god, you completely destroyed that movie. I'm like, no, that wasn't my intent. <laughs> um, I just have some issues, and I, if, if I have issues, I focus on the issues and not so much on the good stuff. So if it comes across like I don't like this movie, it's very good. It's really very good, and... Uh, First of all, a uh, uh, shout out to uh, Blake Simons uh, at Blake Things on uh, Twitter and probably some other stuff as well, who told me, hey, you've got to watch this movie. And usually, whenever he tells me you've got to watch this movie, I've got to watch this movie because it's really, really good. I just found out that today uh, he likes a movie that I hate uh, like hell, but I hate it from the... Uh, deepest, deepest um, ground of my soul. I don't know how to... I mean, words. I don't know words. Anyway, um, and it's a movie that a lot of people like very much, and I just hate, 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 and uh, so he likes it too, and doesn't understand why I hate it, but usually, usually, if Black says... It's a good movie. It's a good movie. I trust him. So I trusted him here, and I thought it's slightly not as good as he said, a tiny, tiny bit, not as good. Um, I still liked it very much, I'd, and I, I can totally see something like in the future coming, that I watch it again and I will like it much more, because there's some things that I don't like that are very much about my pet peeve, uh, and if you have watched this channel before, you probably know about it, it's a uh, blue and orange, and here we always see it's more like red and blue. That's the color scheme of this movie, but doesn't stop there. There's a lot of blue and orange going on, which <sighs> I, I, I will do a specific video just about this pet peeve, so I don't have to talk about it in the reviews all the time. Just, uh, yeah, it's a very realistic movie. And if you come up with very re unrealistic color schemes, I don't like it. And uh, so that distracted me a lot. So if I get over this uh, when I watch it again and I can focus more on the actual movie and maybe some other points that I didn't like so much um, will be figured out. Because that's a lot. There's, there's a lot of stuff that's more like... A situational thing, how you feel in that moment, and uh, maybe it just uh, annoyed me a little bit more than it would have done on any other day. So Blake says it's one of the greatest movies of the year. I think it's very good. Yeah. So uh, no, and w whatever you do, just uh, watch it. It's another one of these um, newcomer directors or relatively fresh directors doing a pretty cool, new, nice movie this year, while the established directors shot out all their stuff last year, except Kiyoshi Kurosawa, who put out three bangers in a row uh, this year. So uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa is the greatest, and uh, we love him very much. Uh, thank you, Kiyoshi. But this is Igarashi Kohei, so the opposite uh, Kohei Igarashi in uh, English, and um, he has done some... Other stuff, um, the most famous movie he has done is The Night I Swam, uh, which I haven't seen yet, and it looks like it's it's torturing me. Like, just uh, looking at these, these screenshots tortures me with my pet peeve already, so I guess uh, I, I, I will suffer a lot if I watch that. Um, a little bit about the cast. We have Hiroki Sano, who was, for example, in uh, F is for Future, 
which was a really nice uh, short movie, and he was in the pretty good uh, Mr. Suzuki, A Man in God's Country. I think that played on the Nippon Connection, and uh, yeah, it was, was good. Uh, then we have Yoshi Nori Miyata, uh, was for example in Drive My Car and Evil Does Not Exist. Good. Um, and we have Naidu Yamamoto, who was, for example, in the very nice uh, straying about uh, cheating couples and a cat that gets lost. Um, yeah, then we have a lady that I won't even try to pronounce her name. It's a Vietnamese lady, and she has done only this movie. Then we have uh, Tomo Kasajima, who was in a movie that's called uh, Domains, that's seemingly her most famous, but I don't know. And uh, yeah, we have some other people. Oh, well, we have one quite famous here, actually. We have Tomo Mitsu Adachi, who was, uh, for example, in The Handmaiden, like Father, like Son, Before We Vanish, Onoda, Small, Slow, But Steady, and a lot of other good stuff. And um, yeah, I guess, yeah. We have uh, Shunsuke Yajima from A Happy End. So, yeah. Anyway, Super Happy Forever is basically a movie split in two parts. Um, and we have first a guy with his friend going to a hotel at the beach and he seemingly going a little bit crazy because he's looking for a red hat that has been lost since like either five years ago. Yeah, so he's looking for this red hat that got lost long, long time ago. And uh, soon we will figure out that he's uh, mourning uh, his wife's death yeah so she passed away he goes back to the place where they met five years ago and um at some point the movie switches to the past uh, to that day they met and that sounds on paper like a very good idea it's a pretty good idea and um yeah uh, just w one one thing before we start actually um I uh, went to my local cinema to watch it and I got the the normal pamphlet and I saw on the sign that you can buy a uh, script and I like having scripts so I wanted to buy it uh, I couldn't so later I checked on the internet I missed the director by one day he did a talk event the day before so uh, the scripts were all sold out so I ordered it online I got uh, this nice clear file, the Japanese love clear files, and I got the red hat design uh, script. Very nice. And they sent me uh, this whole folder with a letter and a lot of um, flyers and so on. For example, here for this movie. Um, very nice. We have some other stuff. We have there, here that's the K2 cinema. It's sadly in Tokyo, so it's not so easy to go there for me. But uh, they have their schedule and all these things. And I think that's really cool, really nice. I was very happy when I got this. Um, yeah, just cinemas having online shops and uh, sending out stuff is cool. And yeah, having like script books is really cool i love it um especially since movie scripts are usually not as difficult to read as like real novels um so good good practice for me and yeah so that's uh very great um what's very great about this movie like i said the structure is quite nice quite interesting um you have like the depression part and then you end on a happier note um just to realize yeah no actually life sucks yeah and of course it handles this whole how do i handle um loss what do i do what does loss to you um yeah like even the situation how how can your friends 
actually help you? Can they help you get over it? Um, all this, these issues are quite well and realistically presented. And this whole uh, flashback, I think, is uh, pretty nice, well done, nothing really wrong here. And uh, yeah, so, so we get more of a, of a portrait of this depressed uh, human. Yeah, and there's not much to complain. Basically, it's a very nice film. It's nicely acted. Um, this is all interesting. What's going on? Um, this is really nothing wrong. <laughs> My complaints, and we we can, I guess, uh, skip the spoiler part here as well. Um, I have some issues with this movie. One, like I said, it's a very realistic feeling movie and then you have these elements that just look super fake because they're all like in this annoying color scheme that I hate so much. So that's uh, issue number one. Then this whole story around this hat is... Uh, I mean, in, in a different movie, I wouldn't mind it, but because this is so so focused on being realistic or portraying the real, like, how how people feel if they suffer a loss like this in a very realistic manner, I, I think it feels a little bit wrong to have such a, like, obviously constructed um, story with things just by sheer accident fall in place um, in, in a more fantastical movie in a less realistic or naturalistic movie I wouldn't mind that at all but here it felt sometimes a little bit odd a little bit too on the nose and yeah in the end a little bit too predictable I mean it's not a bad thing if movies are predictable because most movies are usually uh yeah the good guys win the bad guys lose um spoiler wow um here yeah i i, I think it didn't really match the tonality 100% but i said that's something maybe i rewatched it and i feel completely different about it so that's nothing i really think is so bad but um I, I i would have been happier with the movie it was if it was a little bit more elegant maybe a little bit less on the nose and yeah that would have helped a lot another thing that would have helped a lot is maybe a little bit more characterization of these characters um maybe the second part about how they meet is, is maybe a little bit too short um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's basically very similar to something like Before Sunrise. Yeah, two people meet by accident, they spend some time together, and they basically fall in love, and that works there very well, and it could work here very well as well. But, um, it doesn't maybe. I, I, I mean, it, it's still, it's still functioning it it works but i i felt like it could have been better it could have been more but that's maybe my last complaint about this movie um the characterizations is does it doesn't feel that deep i mean in part i mean this is probably all part of the same issue like um yeah in the beginning the guy is mostly depressed and we i think okay we would dive into that deep enough so yeah he sees a pretty um annoying depressed human and not very friendly but uh yeah i felt like in the second part and that's the part that leads to the end where you get out of the movie and that's what you what stacks sticks in your brain the most um especially the, the female character um is pretty shallow and um what you see of her personality for me is not very likable i don't know if that's a 
uh, version of this many pixie dream girl thingy, but basically all her her personality is that she's a little bit weird, but in a, for me, very unlikable manner, because her personality mostly consists of she's irresponsible and keeps losing things. That's why in the end the hat is not there. Um, and uh, maybe that's my main issue, that I don't really feel like I, I want to spend time with this person. Not that she's unlikable, but I wouldn't want to be around that person too much um yeah so i guess that's that's maybe my main problem maybe the changes if i watch it again maybe i discover something that i haven't noticed because i was too obsessed with colors or some other silly stuff um yeah but this it sounds much much worse than it is it's a still perfectly fine functioning movie but um coming from this expectation this is maybe one of the greatest movies of the year to this is a little bit um yeah i, I had very high expect expectations and these very high expectations were slightly disappointed no so i i still think it's, it's good maybe very good maybe maybe next time it will be great there's a chance but um yeah small things that added up to me being a little bit annoyed and we have this Vietnamese lady and that's another thing that I don't really enjoy um, foreigners in Japanese movies in Happy End they were all just like completely perfectly integrated they spoke very normal Japanese and here of course um, this is she's a cleaning staff of the hotel and of course she speaks Japanese very badly and um, she gets portrayed as this person who just comes to Japan to earn money and go back home eventually. Of course there are many people like that but it just feeds this stereotype and I, I checked in the in the um, script if the lines she says are actually like in the movie and they are so I must guess that the um writer so i guess yeah that's the the uh, director himself was uh someone who is named uh, koichi kubodera um that they have written these um lines for the foreign cast and i don't know so we get a version of a native speaker writes dialogue for foreigners how they imagine foreigners speak and i feel a little bit uncomfortable with these things i don't know i don't i don't really like this and this focus on oh they just come here to earn money because oh we japanese have more money than the others of course it happens a lot there are many people like that especially from countries like vietnam so it's, it's not unrealistic i just don't like it yeah so um that annoyed me a little bit i mean she she gets portrait besides us in a very nice way she's a very nice character here uh no no issues with that just this oh i don't have a dream i just come here for the money it's and easy, easy broken japanese i don't know that could have been handled a little bit nicer um a little bit less stereotypical i think so yeah maybe maybe it was just the wrong day that i watched it but like I said, it's still a really good movie. Just some little things that were like... Mm, mm, for a movie of the year candidate, uh, I expected a little bit more. I'm very sorry, Blake. Um, I still highly recommend watching Super Happy Forever. And I hope it plays many festivals and stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you will be able to enjoy it and maybe enjoy it more than I do. Uh, or I did, uh, yeah, if, if I get the chance to watch it again, I will watch it again just to see how that uh, turns out for me, um, if I can find more enjoyment in that. Like, like, like I said, sometimes you watch a movie, you find one thing that annoys you, so you focus on the annoying things, and uh, then you're like, ah, this is annoying too. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's absolutely not a bad movie. You have some very beautiful shots, the 
actors are good. Um, the emotional core works very well. So, I mean, no matter how you feel about the his, his partner uh, herself, like, if, if you like her or not, you can still feel the pain that he's going through. So, that's totally okay i just felt like the last i don't know how long if it's half the movie or just like 30 minutes or so we spend a lot of time with her and i found mm, not really someone i want to spend that much time with <laughs> just because i wish she would drive me crazy i would go really mad and uh yeah that that's another thing if if you feel like oh my god that's the greatest person ever you will probably enjoy this movie much more i just felt like oh my god i don't want to be around this woman um please let me go uh so yeah i guess just many things came together that made my impression of this a little bit worse but still like like i said it's a very nice uh, very beautiful movie please watch it enjoy it and uh, don't listen to my stupid uh, complaints uh thank you very much uh i forgot have i said uh, who i am and what you're watching my name is michael this is the compendium of discomfort so that's very fitting for this uh, review and uh, see you next time thank you very much bye <laughs>